just from all the crap I'm reading on Facebook, man, America's full speed downhill right now. <laughs> My last day jobs were a record store in Colorado and a bike messenger in LA. And at the time, I was really into the old San Francisco psychedelic posters. I was really digging the art. But we're doing all the paste up, cut out paste up stuff, you know. But that's when I started making work. I remembered the opposing colors, the vibration, you know. I still do it today. Well, are you, are you from Washington? You're from Colorado? Uh, born in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved when I was two. My father's from Ohio. So, Germany, Ohio, Texas, or Colorado, and then California, San Diego, Huntington Beach, Hollywood, LA, then I went to Seattle for 20 years. And that's where the screen printing took off, doing work for all those grunge bands. Everything, everything starts, I don't think, I just, it happens. You know, it's all flow, and then I'll go back and fatten them up. Underneath all of this is one of these. So, and you see all the small stuff, that's my auto, I call it auto script. Um, I just go in and I write, dip right, dip right, and just cover and cover and cover, and as these big images get buried, it almost, it becomes a secret. When did you first start getting into producing art? Did you start painting? Did you start, like, what? I, st I, I always doodled around, mm -hmm. you know, as a kid. It was always in me. And then when I, uh, let's see, 80, 1986, friends were going on tour. Hey, I want to learn how to make t-shirts. So I bought a book, made some screens, printed some t-shirts, went on tour for six weeks, barely got a slice of pizza a day, lost all my money, <laughs> but that's where it started. So the t-shirt the business started then, and I wound up doing that for 25 years, mostly in Seattle. These I call paintouts. Mm -hmm. And so it basically started with fashion magazines, and I just basically painted out the money. That was my whole leave the eyes. That's all that mattered. I painted out all the money. And so I would just do them black and white. And then with the Poscas, that's when the color started happening. The original was only yay big. Like it was from a kind of that size. And so I painted out, put, painted the black and I painted the white. So then I have these printed, A3, and then I take the Poscas and I hand color her skin and the dress. So I went to college for a half a year. And in the dorms there was a guy that was from Chicago. And he listened to Pat Metheny and Pink Floyd and the Ramones. So November of 1979, the Ramones played in Denver. And holy shit. Save my, I've always said this and I will continue to say this. The Ramones saved me from a life of utter mediocrity. Let's move Kate out of the way because she fell off the wall. But this whole set, it's like 25, 26, I don't know how many. I did them in two weeks. <laughs> Just layer after layer, tape up, layer, take it down, put it on the floor, grab another one, mm -hmm. throw more color, mix it as I go. And a lot of these are like looking like, oh, they need something. Missing something on this one, thinking about this one. And I got it all done. Pretty happy. Uh, 
And now they just stay on the bed until I find them a new home. Uh, I quit college after a year. We saw these other kids from Fort Collins in the Wendy's in the parking lot of the Rainbow Music Hall. And we saw each other, we'd seen each other, we never talked. And we like look at each other literally one night, it's like, this is fucking shit. Let's start our own band. It was pure punk rock. Right then, Mike, I'm playing guitar. Alex, like, I'm playing bass. And my friend Al, I'm playing drums. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'll sing. So we started playing a band called Blacklist, Circle Around the A. And we, we started making our own flyers in Fort Collins. And pay, we posted up maybe 20 flyers before we ever saw a show, we ever played a show. And people hated us. Our first show, it was about five below zero. We drove to Denver. The heater hoses had fallen off the exchange units in my VW bus. There was five people at the show. We played our set. One person there was Jello Biafra. Yeah, I'll miss my, my lap, my lap of, it's not every morning, but it's close, because I'll go out and I'll go to my, I call him the silver market guy, because his storefront is a silver market, but his wife, they're from Southern Thailand. My soy guy, the donut lady, you know, the fruit stand guy with the cookies. It's a nice lap. This has been my zone for four years. I mean, when I first came here, there was very few people. And they were doing, mostly doing the stuff in the street. Luckily, when I came the first time, and a friend said, hey man, send email Chip7. So I was super lucky. If that hadn't happened, I never would have come back. You know, so before they, a few times, hey, come meet us, we'll go paint. And since I usually primarily used to brush, you know, they let me paint. And, but, and then, but P7 was always, was always really like, good man, keep going. Always pushing, you know. So that, that was always a nice accolade. When Chip7 and Rucket and the boys showed me Posca markers, you ever seen these? Holy shit. It was just like a revelation. That's the quiver, baby. All brand new. Carry on, baby. Couple of hard drives. Stickers. They're 18. 18. The guitar is 6. 36, 41 kilos. I've got four kilos for check baggage. If I can carry this on or not, that's what. That's the deal. So the transition to the West Coast, moved to California, working for a restaurant, moved to San Diego, nightmare. Did that for a year and a half, and then moved to LA. Started printing T-shirts in LA, you know, during the hair metal days. No, my friends in a band from Denver called The Fluid was on Sub Pop. They were on a German label. The German label wanted Mud Honey. They swapped. So I wound up doing The Fluid, Mud Honey, and Blood Circus in the beginning, doing their t-shirts in LA. And then I went up and was there for a couple days and said, shit, I live here. handles are over 40 years old there's some serious some serious poles been through the taking care of with that wood mine are all like 30 now the sub pop in those days you know working doing the early design posters and t-shirts for nirvana mud honey the life is before nirvana's never mind and after nirvana's never mind whenever that record came out that's the break that's because the shit got really weird Shit got great, shit went haywire. I started doing my abstract work and my crazy printing. Still doing random business until 2009. 
and then close it down. My turn. Traveling, collecting art, painting, collecting art, still printing, collaging. But now I've figured it out where I can literally, now in my space in Bangkok, I change floors, I change gears, and there's no slowing down. This is the hidden glamour. Ah, but I know what I want to do. That one's wide enough. All right. My philosophy is once you think you know everything, you're done. Might as well step out in front of a bus. That's the other thing. I might have to write a philosophy book. All in Jeff speak. <laughs> It'll be puntastic and tangential all at the same time. <laughs>